I think tonight, I think we all saw for ourselves that there really are levels of this game. Bayern Munich tonight completely outclassed us. It really was a humbling experience because it highlighted to us just how far away we are from reaching those levels. In today's match review, I'm going to be talking about the things we can do to get to those current levels at Bayern Munich are on. I'll be speaking about certain individual performances today. And of course, I'll be talking about Frank Lampard and whether he got things right with the tactics and with the lineup. Now, before I get into anything, if you do like today's video, and I know a very depressing night of football, then smash that like button. It helped me go over 1,500 likes. And from this point on, I'm going to talk about Lampard, the tactics, and whether he got things right with the lineup. Now, we saw that we were going to use a 3 4 3. I feel like the fan base predicted that we were going to go for this formation. Maybe we were a bit too predictable. Because it seemed like Bayern Munich were very clued up when it came to countering us and playing through our system. For me, the main reason why the 3-4-3 was used was because we needed that extra defensive protection for Jorginho and for Kova. I think this game really highlighted to us the lack of their defensive game. You know, of course, when it comes to counter-pressing and, you know, interceptions and winning balls in the opponents off, they're amazing. That's what they're best at doing. But when it comes to the other side of the game, they're not there they're not anywhere close. And with their lack of physicality, their lack of defensive nous, their inability to sniff out any type of danger as well, we were kind of forced to have to use a back three. I mean, let's not forget, there's so many injuries in the team. I'm sure that Lampard would have been very disappointed that he couldn't call upon Ruben in tonight's game. Of course, hoping that he plays some part in the game. Maybe if we had Ruben, things would have been different. I mean, of course it would be because he is one of our best players. And we can't forget that we're missing out on him. Hudson Adoy. We're missing out on Christian Pulisic as well. And Golo Kanse. Kanse is meant for games like this. Against Man City, against Liverpool, he was our best player in midfield. Let's not forget when it comes to the big games against the big boys, Kanse is one of our best players, if not our best player. He is utterly world class. He improves any team in Europe. And to think of even selling him is absolutely crazy. And I'm hoping that tonight's game really showed a lot of people that, you know what, we need to calm down a little bit with this Jorginho cover. Of course, very sexy on the ball, very nice, but there's more to being a midfield player than cute five-a-side passes with each other. There's more to that. If we had Kante today, it would have been a lot harder for Bayern Munich, of course, and we'd have been a lot stronger as a team. Very disappointing to miss out on him, and of course, losing out on all these attacking options as well. You know, we miss that ingenuity, that skill, the creativity from your Hudson Adoys and your Christian Pulisic. And, and on top of everything, a lot of players aren't fully fit. You know, tonight, Tammy Abraham was very poor, but it's been like this for a while now. And really, it's no surprise because he's been forced to play through injury because Lampard is lacking options and he's needed the big players for decisive games because every single game matters. We need to get a top four finish. I think by now, we understand the consequences of non-Champions League football for the summer. You know, we need it. We're desperate for it. And of course, it's forced Lampard into some very risky situations which managers have to deal with and have to do their best in. Tammy's lack of consistent game time as well as the injuries, you know, not fully recovering from his ankle knock as well. You know, it, it results in performances like this. And I'm making this point before I start dissecting the team because we have to understand the context for tonight as well. We've all seen how we played against Man City and Liverpool. Of course, that would have been the same system we would have used if we had key players personnel on the team but when you don't have them it forces you to have to adapt and tonight 3-4-3 was the best that the team could do and continuing on I have to show a little respect to Bayern Munich I mean of course I do they utterly humbled us tonight they showed us the levels utterly sensational all their players are better than us tonight every single one I mean when I'm seeing Thiago you know, outpowering Kovacic. And we know that Kovacic is a very tenacious midfield player that you rarely see get a brush off the ball in the Premier League. When Thiago is doing that to your midfield, then you just know what type of calibre of team you're playing against. But of course, we can't forget context in regards to why Bayern Munich is so good as well. It's how many of their players have played consistently together over how many seasons. That is very important. 
I mean, back in the day when we used to have our Drogba's, our Lampard's, our Terry's, we really profited from having a group of players that clocked so many seasons under their belt, especially during times that we had so many managers coming in and coming out. But I mean, it have that, they have their style of play as well, and all of their players are in their prime. I think Alfonso Davis was the only teenager to play for them tonight. Everyone else was 30, 28, 27, 26. We've seen Nabry. You know, remember Napri back in the day that couldn't get in the West Brom team? I mean, even back then, I knew that was utterly ridiculous by Pulis at the time. But Napri had to really fight for his base to get to this level. You know, he really played for a lot of small clubs moving to Hoffenheim before getting that step up to Bayern Munich. But he didn't instantly set the world on fire. You know, it's taken him a lot of work, a lot of hard work to get to the current level he's at. And I'm making this point because, you know, we can look at tonight's game, we can feel disheartened, we can feel, you know, our Tammies, our Masons, you know, our Reese's. They're never going to be as good as a buying players. Maybe this whole youth experiment isn't the best place to go, and we need to buy and re strengthen in the transfer market. For me, that's too much of a cop out. We need to have some more conviction. We need to remember that this whole process, this whole strategy with the club, isn't to buy players for your Georginias and your covers. No, it's to buy players to supplement your Reese's, your Tammies, your Masons, your Hudson Adoys, Pulisic, all the young players. That's what we're doing. That's why we're signing players to supplement those guys because I think as we saw tonight, you know, there's a current level that a lot of the players in your Rudigers, Alonso's, Jorginho's and Giroud just can't reach at this point in time. When it came to their individual battles, they all lost out on them time and time again. But I think we all knew that, you know, we knew that we can't win the league when you have players like this in your first team, we need to have a better, stronger caliber of player. We're making a very positive start by signing Ziyech. Imagine if we had a player like this in the team that's only improving how we attack and how we break down Bayern. That is the first stage of this process. It's going to be a very exciting summer. If we secure Champions League football, things get even bigger. That Champions League money is going to be huge. And the club are already in talks with players that they want for the summer. So we have to remember that this is a process. We cannot forget that. I know we saw a game like this, but we can't get fully disheartened because I think we had to expect that. The team is stretched to its limits at this point in time. We have a lot of players nowhere near as good as the level that Bayern are on. But maybe there are a few things that Lampard can do to help with the team. Now, I look at our defence, I look at Christensen, I look at Rudiger, and I understand why they're playing together. With these two in the back line, they help transition the ball out from the back a lot better than Tomori and Zuma a lot crisper, a lot quicker. They find the right angles. They get the ball to the pivot really quickly. Basically, the reason why they're playing is because they don't just pointlessly pass sideways from left to right constantly, like Zuma and Samori had a massive habit of doing throughout huge parts of the season. However, when you don't play Zuma or Samori, you miss out on a lot of defensive excellence. Zuma is a colossal in the air. Statistically, he's alongside Van Dijk, the two best aerial defenders in the league. He has the pace. His last itch tackling is a lot better than Rudiger's his positional sense as well. How often do you have to see Zuma busting a gut to get back in position? The same thing with Samori. He had a habit sometimes of losing the ball in his own half, being a bit stoppy at times, but defensively one-on-one, -on -one, he was excellent, getting tight to his man every single time. And of course, his extreme pace. And in the game today, I mean, of course, it was harder for our back line because our midfield got exposed. But at the same time, our defence couldn't even give the strike force of Bayern a composition. Physically, they were weaker. They were slower. They just weren't there. But with Zuma and Samori, you have two defenders that can battle. And in games like this, sometimes you need to have some of those qualities because you have to ride your luck a lot. And you need to make sure that you can rely on your defence to literally be that last line of defence. Unfortunately, it wasn't the case with Christensen and Rudiger. And for me, I thought both players were very poor in tonight's game. It frustrates me that we couldn't play Bayern Munich with our full strength team because if we had our big boys back in peak form and fitness, this game will be completely different and I'm not saying that we get the win against Bayern, but it will be a lot more of a competition. Bayern looked so confident against us, they knew exactly how to break us down, the way they just stretched us out wide. You know, they really stretched the entire field to make sure that they had to force us out of position because they knew that once you get past the midfield, you have all the time and space between the lines. And what they did was they had the position of Alfonso Davis and Kimmich very high on the touchline, really stretching the play. The defence split their back line so they could make those vertical passes in the channels to their fullbacks out wide. 
And as they kept doing that over and over and over again, eventually it made our players a lot more tired. And as the game went on, that line to prevent that pass to the fullback, well, it broke down. And from then on, Reese and Aspie and Alonso and Co got exposed on the flanks time and time again. And from that point on, you know, it was light work for Bayern Munich. In the Talking Points video tomorrow, I'm going to go in a lot of detail in regards to areas that we can improve in the team transfer-wise. So make sure you guys stay tuned tomorrow. It's going to be a big one. But, you know, looking at this team, you know, midfields in defence, Lampard's been constantly rotating more than he wants to because he doesn't have that right balance. It's natural because he has inherited this team. I'm sure that in the transfer window, that's when you can really judge Lampard in his work and how good he is as a manager. I guess the only fear is that the players don't lose too much confidence from this game today. You know, there was some bravery. You know, they did put in an effort. You know, getting out class isn't embarrassing. It's not. We need to make that distinction. Let's not forget that Bayern Munich on the field, every single one of their players is better than ours. And I say this because... We have so many more difficult games to come. I guess the only positive is that we don't have to focus too much on the Champions League. I mean, let's be realistic. We're not scoring four goals against Bayern Munich without conceding. I mean, come on. We can't keep clean sheets. It's that simple. And at least we have more time to prepare for league games, which is the most important competition for us because we need to get a top four spot. But you guys, on that point, I'm going to wrap things up and keep things moving. A humbling, disappointing, depressing night of football. But we have to remember that this is a process. We've signed Ziyech, who's going to be a massive, huge upgrade to the team. And many more players will come. So on that point, I'm going to keep things moving and wrap things up. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. I'm in the FC. This is Blue Lions TV. Signing out, you guys.